bear, but there are no grizzlies up in Logan Canyon. And so there, and so there were a lot of skeptics. Well, years afterwards, it went on and on for as much as 10 years. And the story went on and on about what a great hunter Frank Clark was, how big that bear was. Now remember, this took place back in 1923, and it wasn't until about 1950, 1960, that a bunch of scouts, you no know, Frank Clark then, after a few years, Frank Clark, uh, he had told his story enough that people knew where the, about where the bear carcass had been buried. So a Boy Scout troop, they all got together under the leadership of some older scouts and they decided to go up and see if they can find that bear carcass. So they went up the canyon, several canyons, and they got up there and they they did find the bear carcass and they dug it up. It wasn't buried very deep, but they dug it up and by now it was nothing but a skeleton. And they, uh, they dug it up and they cut off the head of the bear. And you know that bear's head it was so big that it would fill a bushel basket. <coughs> that gives you an idea of how large that bear was. And they told the people back in New York City, back in the Smithsonian, where they keep all kinds of specimens of all animals, about that big grizzly bear, and they said, ah, oh, couldn't be a grizzly bear. There just aren't any grizzly bears up in Logan Canyon. They said, if you will send us that bear's head, and if it proves to be a grizzly bear, we'll pay you $25 for it. So they did. The scouts took that and sent it back to the Smithsonian, and they confirmed back there that it was was indeed a grizzly bear, the last one, the last one that was that ever been known to be in this part of the area. And they, true to their word, they gave him $25 for that head of that bear, which is really not very much money for all they had gone through. But then they took the head and all those people who supposedly know all the answers, they determined from the size of the head that the bear itself was uh, 9 feet 11 inches tall and weighed 1,100 pounds. And it was the biggest known grizzly bear. They said it was a grizzly bear and the biggest known grizzly bear that had ever been found in this part of the country. And so these scouts, they had found that it was a grizzly bear along with uh, these people back in the Smithsonian. But that wasn't, they still were not satisfied. They decided they wanted to erect some kind of a monument for this bear. So another scout troop later on, they went up there and hiked way back into the mountains with cement and mortar, shovels, picks. And they went back there and they built a, a, a statue and that statue is there to this very day. And if you ever, you kids, if you ever decide you wanted to find out more about the old Ephraim, you could probably get on the internet and it would tell you something about old Ephraim, about old Three Toes. And it would probably, well, in fact, there's no attempt to try to hide where that statue is because they're even making it accessible so people can go in and see where old Ephraim's grave is. 
I don't know if some of you, have you ever been up to it, Brent? Nope. I have. And the skull is in the university's museum, in, in the um, library now. Okay. It's on the Utah State. Library. Yeah. So you can go see the skull of Olympia. But you have been to the grave, Bracken? Yep, you can drive about right to it now. Mm hmm. Rough roads. But... And there's a, quite a story on the, the monument maker down in Logan. I know they put it, uh, quite a story on the headstone about that big bear. But that kid is a story about one of the greatest bears that's ever been known to be in this part of the world. And uh, we don't have many grizzly bears around here now. They live up in Yellowstone Park. There's some, I think there's some in California. But uh, that's the story of old Ephraim. <laughs> One day I'd like to go up there and, and see that monument that's been erected for old Ephraim. Jess's grandpa, when he was a scout, he uh, he uh, w went up into that very uh, spot right below where they killed Old Ephraim and had Frank Clark tell the story to them. Really? This is Boyd? Yeah. And uh, they said when, they, when all the scouts, when it was light, they'd set up camp and... Uh, and they, you know, they had all their tents all around the little meadow, and then they went up in to where, you know, this actually happened, where the, where he killed him. And he said you could have put your arms around all 40 scouts on the way back after they heard the story. <laughs> and they all slept in one tent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be frightening to be in a situation like that. Very frightening. How did Old Ephraim's name get changed from Three Tiles to Old Ephraim? Yay. Fireworks? Uh, the book relates that. I don't remember the particular, do you? The, the book does tell about it, Taya, and I've got the book in here if you want to read it. Okay.